Hey guys, what's up? This is Lynn for GMP Custom Fabrications. Uh, this is part four of the Rat Dooley 460 SWAT and kind of part two of the uh, instrument fiasco. Instrument panel dash. I'll show you somehow through editing. I'll go back and I started doing this at the end of the last video and then re realized I probably need to make a whole video out of it. So if this seems kind of weird. Uh, I, I realized that my original opening is not going to be big enough. Uh, there's no point in fretting over, oh my gosh, you're cutting up a good old Ford dash. Well, I think Mother Nature beat me to it on this one. I went ahead and went over the bandsaw. Carried the camera over there, forgot to turn it on. So you didn't get to see. And you probably would just saw me cry if I had screwed up. So it was probably best you didn't see that. But anyway, so what I ended up doing was I pulled the uh, printed circuit board or whatever you call it. It's not really printed circuit board, it's uh, these runs. Taped them up out of the way. Cut off the part where it plugs into. Uh, I can trim these down even further now. Uh, so it will snap onto the wiring harness. I guess I should let that take. The I have toyed with the idea of redoing the wipers with parts that came out of the RV. Right now, I only have this one wiper on this side. Uh, it doesn't have dual wipers, and which was common back then. I got the truck, it only had one wiper set up the other side to plug. So, possibly using stuff from the RV, I could go ahead and mount both wipers in here with the wiper motor, and that would get it over out of the way. Don't want to sound lazy, but that sounds like a lot more work. Now I'm going to show us 47,000 on that 460. I don't know. I don't know. RVs... I guess it's possible they put that uh, 147,000 miles on it. I have a whole video of Glenn sitting here scratching his head. I do have a drop down. I know, you do that such a nice high quality dash. If I go in there with a the cutoff wheel and cut that piece out. And then make a new part to weld in there that that dash would fit into. Hold up just far enough that the uh, wiper doesn't hit it. I think I could do that. These blinker lights, they can go away because the new dash has blinker lights on it, so I can get rid of all that. Maybe move my wiper switch over to here, which it doesn't really matter. That's actually where the original air switch was for the wipers. Get some cardboard and uh, I'll make some templates for some steel and make a new box that the uh, that will go around the sides of this so this can go ahead and fit in there and until I get it cut out I won't know how far this will fit so go ahead and get me a cut off wheel and we'll make this happen So it'll help me if that battery goes dead or if that car gets full in the middle of this. It's so annoying. There I go talking away from the camera again. Let's try this. Okay, so the last camera died at some point. I don't know when. Hopefully you didn't lose 
didn't miss too much here. Uh, I'll find out when I go back to edit it. Anyway, uh, what I'm up to now is I've got this squeezed in here. Not gonna be centered up with the steering wheel. A lot of cars aren't centered up with the steering wheel. <laughs> got my uh, cereal box here. And what I'll end up, what I'm going to be doing is uh, making a pattern. I'll have a, a facing plate made to fit to the instrument cluster and then that facing plate will mount into the uh, surrounding dash area which I'm getting ready to make and uh, that way I'll weld the dash part onto the existing dash and then uh, mount some weld some nuts onto it and then the instrument cluster the face plate that it's going to be mounted to will have holes to mount to the dash. Here's a marker. First, I think I need to make the face plate, which will kind of mirror. You can see a silicone line I have around here. I, I silicone between the plastic and the uh, cluster before I put it back together, try to keep dust out of it.
See what we can do for these outside corners. All right, so real quick, that camera just got the four corners drilled out. Go ahead and drill my holes for my cluster. Get ready to connect the holes. Okay, uh, hopefully I had some usable footage from all that I just did, uh, in case I didn't just real re recap. Uh, I used a piece of cardboard, made me a template, cut this out of aluminum. Uh, this is a protective coating on here. Uh, it's shiny aluminum underneath it. Uh, when I bent it, I got cracks across there, so that may snap off. If, if it does, it's not a big loss. I'll just have to do something else for the bottom. Get that fit in there like that. Then my next step is I'm going to come across and take this out. But I'm going to go ahead and, and enclose this around the outside, weld a piece on it, and then this will I'll have uh, screws uh, mounting points on the. Uh, on the surround piece that that will attach to. And then I'll have some down here for the uh, bottoms to hook to. So that would fit in there tight like that. And uh, that's where we're at with it. So let me go hunt down some more uh, cardboard for my next piece to go around there. Uh, take these blinkers out of the way and that honk, uh, horn button and then we'll uh, pick it up from there. See you soon. All right, so this side's gonna have to be real precise to the profile. This side over here, I'll be able to blend it in. Once I get it all done, I'm probably going to have to drop my steering wheel down to actually get it into place because I'm having to do a lot of moving around to get the... Uh, I suspect I'll have to drop my steering wheel down when it's all done to get it to fit into place because of all the wiggling around. If I have this top piece welded solid, it's not going to want to just slide right in. I think 
once I get this piece all made to mock to take it off, fold it in half, and make sure the front side is symmetrical. Of course, there'll be a lot of massaging when I go do this in metal. Not really real complicated curves. Now, get my bins in there. Gotta use just the right part of my knee to get the, the metal's thinner here. I gotta watch, it'll put in a sharper curve. that bottom off. This inside part here. I'll be clamping it. Get a good start in on that. That'll kind of dictate how the rest of this is going to fall. And actually, once I get all this secured up around here, I can go ahead and tap in all the rest of this up one to allow me more room maneuver but I don't want to do that until I get, get started on it. And I just notice when I pull that back um cock back that way with that one. I know uh, this probably seems like it's dragging on uh, a little bit. This is all under the swap. A lot of people I'm sure just think of an engine swap as being you pull one motor out, you put another one in. Uh, but anybody that's done an engine swap knows there's a lot more to it than that. And if you don't take an opportunity like that to go ahead and make improvements on your vehicle, uh, in this case, such as you know, my dash, and which I could have used all my I could have kept everything in here pretty much the same as it was. Drop that motor in, and when it didn't work, I'd been lost because I would have had where, you know, the old system was tied in with the new system, and, and you know, this way it forces me to have the, the new system wired from the get-go, from the, from the key to the relays, the solenoids, to the computer. And I should be able to turn the key on, you hear my fuel pump kick on, you know, fan kick on, whatever. But uh, that's my goal. 
So yeah, this isn't going to be a, a short and easy engine swap, 10 minute deal. Maybe at the end, when it's all said and done, I'll go back and, and re-edit everything together and make it into a real quick 10 minute video. Uh, that would probably give me a nosebleed to watch that <laughs> because we all know it's going to be a lot of jumping around. Yeah, I'd like to uh, thank, I, I've been getting a lot of comments, good comments here lately. Uh, it really, I really appreciate it. I try to pull interest it and, and put something out there and try to find like-minded guys that, that are into this kind of stuff. Uh, anyway, let's wrap this up. Uh, I got a bunch of editing ahead of me. This one's going to be a nightmare. I had cameras that weren't going when I thought they were. I had batteries go dead in the middle of doing stuff. And uh, so we'll see. We'll see what kind of uh, what, what I can get out of it. Now, I try to keep my videos about 15 minutes. If it needs to be longer, I'll make it longer. If I've got more stuff in there, it, it just seems like it's been working out. The last video I started out with over an hour of footage and got it down to around 15 minutes. Uh, most of my people I've talked to likes to keep them short like that. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of you out there are like me. I've sat and watched guys that turn rust. How many of us have sat there and watched them for an hour and a half try to get an engine started? You know, we watch them drag it out of the weeds. We watch it and it's like, I can't believe I'm still watching it, but I am. They keep it interesting though. They, they got good production. They, they got good camera stuff going on, actual cameramen. Uh, my hat's off to, uh, there's a few channels I watch, uh, Taylor Ray that has a LS Miata. He does a lot of single person stuff. He, you know, I don't think there's hardly a lot of scenes where you got somebody else holding the camera. Uh, usually it's him setting the camera up, doing the shot, moving the camera, doing another shot. Trying to find channels out there that I like the way they do things and uh, try to try to style kind of that way. If, if nothing else, it gives me encouragement that, hey, you're out here doing it by yourself, but not impossible. It, it gets frustrating trying to uh, keep your head in what you're doing here and keep your head in the cameras. Uh, I learned that playing music a little bit. I used to, uh, back when you know computers were still kind of new, I'd get computer software for recording music. Well, I'd be in the mood to play music, and I'd spend 45 minutes trying to get the software set up right with the drivers and the sound cards and the microphone and all that. And by the time I got the computer to work, I wasn't in the mood to play music anymore. I couldn't play it if I wanted to. But the wrong part of my head was working. And uh, so that's kind of out here. I, I need to remember. On one hand, I'd be doing this whether you guys was here or not. I have to remember that if I want to keep you guys here watching what I'm doing, then I need to keep it interesting for you. Uh, yeah, I'd be out here. I'm, I'm not one of those guys who was into YouTube and then decided I'd get into cars. You know, I, I think that's pretty obvious. I've been into cars and doing crap like this my whole life. But, you know, I just now got into this YouTube thing in the last six months to a year. And, uh, so now I'm trying to figure out, you know, like what I've been doing my whole life, welding and cutting and, and fabricating stuff, and trying to remember, oh, I've got an audience now. I, I need to make sure that they're getting a good angle, that they can see what I'm doing, and that I don't have a light bulb behind my head the whole time that I don't know about. That. And that's, that's the stuff that if I had an extra camera person, or if I had a, a camera that had a display facing me, which might be in the works, uh, then I could at least see that my shots aren't crap. Uh, I know I could get my phone out and look on, fire up the Bluetooth and check it all, but I always forget that. Until I'm sitting there editing it down, and like, man, I should check that before I start shooting for an hour and a half in the same position with that light bulb behind my head. But, uh, anyway, I just wanted to rant a little bit. Then. Uh, and anybody who's been doing this YouTube stuff, I know you guys. Some of you guys have been doing it a long time. I don't have any any expectations of getting rich off of this. Uh, be awesome, but no. Uh, it make the wife happy that I've been spending all this time, but uh, I don't think she's expecting a lot out of it. Uh, but she's been patient. Uh, 
Maybe when, she, when it warms up more, I'll get her out here, whether she's just holding the camera, which, which would make things easier. If she was holding the camera, then I could bounce ideas off of her, or she could uh, say, can you say that again? You had your head turned away from me, and I couldn't hear what you said. That would come in handy, because I know I was still doing that a lot. Uh, I'm talking, because I know you need to hear what I'm thinking, but at the same time, if I turn my head away, you can't hear what I'm saying. I guess that's it. Rambling time's over. This is Glenn for GMP Custom Fabrications. Living the dream till the freaking phone rings. Thanks for watching.